goodness sakes. I needed that bit this morning to wake up a little bit, to get ready, to deal. It is so good to see you. I tell you there are times when I do think that I should not listen to the television late at night. There have been times when my speeches became a little, a little strong in their descriptions and predictions, but now the broken world itself outdoes me every night. I tell you what, but I shall persist. I praise those who, with courage and reason, oppose the fascist small minds that we saw marching last week. In Charlottesville, I was a national co-chair of Obama Pride in 2008, and I'll tell you, it breaks my heart that we are in this place at this time in this country. You know, those marchers spouting religion-driven ideas most of the time would have you and me done away with if they could, if they had the power. They won't make a distinction. Think about that. Think about what that demands of us. Oh, okay. Thank you for welcoming me. Marsha Botzer, she and her pronouns. I am so very, very glad to be with you this weekend. Because certainly, time and struggle has been on my mind for a long time. I founded Ingersoll Gender Center in Seattle to deal with gender and gender identity issues over 40 years ago. This is our 40th anniversary, our official 40th anniversary, if you're in Seattle. Oh yeah, there you go, thank you. If you're in Seattle on the 31st of this month, you come to our party, will you? I'll buy you a drink. All right. Ingersoll's been around 40 years. We've dealt with all manner of issues for families and friends and organizations that need answers to questions of gender and identity. We've done a support group every Wednesday of every week of every year for 40 plus years. We never miss one. I'm so proud of that. Oh my goodness, we're there to help. Okay, I do want to talk about gender and identity and lesbian, gay, bisexual, and gender non-conforming folks, LGBTQ. But you know what? Unlike past conventions, I do not think that we need to go into deep definition like we used to of LGBTQ because so many people, so many of you, so many of my friends now know about these issues and have a friend and so on. But I tell you what, if you would like to talk a little bit more about all these issues, LGBTQ, what it is and what it isn't, especially around transgender. Find some resources, any of that sort of thing. Do find me throughout this weekend. We'll sit down over a cup or a glass and we'll talk a little bit more. Hmm. My parents bought a really good house just after World War II. They paid it off 30 years later. They clunked champagne glasses. It was done. It was a good home. But just a little while ago, not too long ago, a realtor friend of mine told me that house is for sale. Oh, so I tell you what, I had a little bit of fear, but then I said, well, get me in there. I want to go see it. I want to go see that old house because it had been so many decades since I walked in that front door. And the realtor told me there'd been at least three or four owners since that time. When I'm supposedly a rock star who'd done some things to the house. Okay, I still want to see it. But when I walked in, there it was, looking very much the way it had looked way back then. I went down in the basement. Basements. Yeah. Down in the basements where all those years ago I had dreamed an impossible dream about myself, an impossible dream about the possible life. And there was the basement, almost untouched since I'd left it in the 60s, where I had once tried to build a little area in that basement that was for me, private. My fingerprints were still in some wood putty holding up a temporary light that I'd put there. I tell you. And on a storage room door in the corner, there was a pencil drawing, a drawing I'd done at 10 years of age. Oh, my friends, that strange, by chance, childhood museum 
may not have changed in nearly 60 years, but I tell you, the city, the culture, the world certainly has. Oh yes, the LGBTQ movement has grown. Yes, thank you. And we are now fully in the point of understanding that we are not alone and there are great allies with us and new allies to be found everywhere and joined. And this is our continuing challenge to join with others in a larger project of justice, reason, and equity. And here is our common purpose together today, our common purpose that unites us atheist and LGBTQ, for just as LGBTQ people have found a new voice in the world, so too as our atheist struggle found new interest and new power. Now back during those 60s in Seattle, my hometown, the city government was actively, and the police, actively suppressing lesbian and gay organizers and activists, they were doing that. And they would have thoroughly crushed transgender people like myself if we had been open and organizing at that time. And you know what else happened in those 60s? Oh, yes, a certain Madeleine Murray O'Hare formed an organization. Oh, so much pressure, so intense. And both our groups were attacked then and are attacked now because of who we are and how we express ourselves. In both examples, religion and religion's ways led the violent, fiery, condemning attacks. The ancient damning calls came at us. Family, sex, morals, women's place, almost never men's place, Women's place, birth and reproduction, gender expression, home, order, claims everywhere that everything would be destroyed and the country ruined if we atheists and LGBTQ people had even a voice, a face, a moment. Not so then, not so now. No. What further binds us, my friends? Atheist and LGBTQ. The discovery of identity binds us. Who you are, or of love, who you care about, or that the tales of gods are not, in fact, true. These human discoveries bring with them personal struggles, questions late in the night, self-examination, conditioned or denied by the talk that you hear around you, the culture's messages about what's right or wrong, acceptable or unacceptable, those messages we inherit and carry inside us, frightening, subtle warnings sometimes, that in so many situations keep us quiet for too long until, until we must decide on liberty or acquiesce to self-deception, repression, and slow burden dissolution. There is no magic struggle in all of this, only pain that should not be. Rather, there should only be loving, friendly help. For in this work of wrestling with these questions, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people and atheist individuals discover the way to understanding our humanity. Discover and know that we LGBTQ and atheist people have no sin, no sickness, no unconscious sexual problems, that we do not somehow arise from the Enlightenment or Western philosophy gone wrong or academics tampering with history or dreaded feminist propaganda or morals lost or politics astray. Oh, I've, I've heard them all time and again. No, we are simple. Diversity. We are diversity, not pathology. Yes, <laughs> diversity, not pathology. Human diversity. As I have known, as I have known all my life, but I've learned from the neuroscientists, anthropologists, psychologists, sociologists across the world that this is true for LGBTQ. 
Just as atheism, atheism is not a religion. It's not against religion. It's without religion, which I knew, I have known, but I've learned from friends just recently. This is my mission, my point, my project here today, to link and bind our two great struggles to the full benefit of both, for we both already fight the rising battles that threaten within and beyond the LGBTQ and atheism worlds, because these battles include, by horrible default, destruction of atheist and LGBTQ people. So we fight. We fight the broken ideas that want to remove our health protections, dirty our food, water and air, immiserate our young and old. We fight to stop the re-energized, murderous destruction against people of color, immigrants, anyone deemed less. The violent division of class and income, employment, survival itself, I tell you, under attack today is the very simple meaning of getting a good job and having a good life. We fight voter suppression, the Supreme Court corrupted each of these and more. And our opposition, our opposition, launches these horrors against us using a new old trick, a deception that comes at us streaming dollars and covered up with a trifling soft blanket of pretentious naming. They call it Religious Liberty, Religious Freedom Acts. It is nothing but the idea that my religious belief trumps your life. No. What benighted fantasy is all this? What goals do these tricks preface? Do they want a revival? They are bringing one. It is the revival of hate, fear, power, and deception. Do they wish for an awakening? It is an awakening to a nightmare. Yet here we are. And what is our answer to this fetid obsession, this crude attack? I say our mutual answer must be no. No. Because here are some real examples of how these phantasms of oppression and religion and hate actually play out in the world today in 28 of the United States LGBTQ people can be fired, still fired for expressing themselves. In 30 of the states, there are low or no protections for transgender people. The current administration talked about welcoming LGBTQ people, but what have they done? They've acted to remove us from the federal surveys on health, particularly the National Survey of Older Americans. They have prevented questions that we have researched for years from getting on the 2020 census. They have rescinded Department of Education, Department of Justice, LGBTQ guidelines and Title IX instructions. They have gutted protections for LGBTQ workers and for federal contractors. They've done all of that. They've fully promoted anti-LGBTQ religious freedom type legislation. And now we see it being rolled out across the whole land and supported in other countries. And you know what? Every one of those comes with a big sign that says no atheists allowed. And this administration welcomes the direct guidance of the religious right, focus on the family, goes to the Oval Office. And everywhere, they whisper that marriage, equality, settled law may be mutable and reversed. 30 years I've been with my partner. We married. They're not going to take it. All right, <clears throat> this and more. And they did it all. In seven months, they've done all that. One very worried audience member at a recent LGBTQ meeting said, religion has got a lot to answer for. Oh, yes, it does. And do you see how this process being used against LGBTQ people is a model for action against all groups, any group, labor, human reproduction, education, health. And would you add atheists? I certainly would. Yes, indeed. And if there is any doubt that this attitude of dismissal from the administration has real world results. Look around you. Charlottesville, healthcare, this week's tweets. So far this year, almost 20 transgender people have been murdered in this country, murdered through hate, 
most of them transgender people of color. And this, in my state of Washington, my state of Washington, which is known as a progressive enclave, twice in the last two years, the Family Policy Institute of Washington Religion Everywhere has joined other haters to attack the LGBTQ community and attack protections that we have had in place for over 11 years. Not one single problem in 11 years, and they come at us to destroy these protections. They brought initiative campaigns that would remove and eliminate transgender people from schools and public life. They brought this attack, and it's brought so much grief to families and harm to children. Twice they have put transgender at the tip of that rough spear. Once last year in Initiative 1515, we beat it. And again this year in 1515, and we beat it. But we did not do it alone. Here are two things. We did it with good argument, honest organizing, no violence, no trickery. Yet they promised to come back at us. That's their promise. In our struggle, we brought people together. Moms and dads were with us. Workers were with us. Businesses, large and small, the Microsofts, the Amazons, were with us. Educators, activists, immigrants, atheists were with us. They are us. I know it can be done, this kind of unity, and done with all of our glorious and frustrating intersections of self and language and identity and thought and culture, all of it, together, respected and well meant, together, I tell you. All this makes me think of past human struggles, the ones I've studied, those struggles to protect our mutual best hopes. Those efforts are done, they are won or lost, they are faded now. Hours, years, so many moments, so much human toil, gathered by history now, roiling a myriad gleaming wave that crashes here, today, now for us. The sun still rises and lights my childhood home. The rain falls, but worlds have come and gone since I drew that picture on that wall. Movements, rallies, elections, presidents, hippies, millennials, fighters, friends, wars, laws, policies, and what I know now is this, that our particular struggles, yours and mine, are mutual, and they reoccur, each time refreshed with alterations, a different look, some different words, each fight bringing a few more to freedom. It's worth the fight, it is worth the fight, but it is not finished, no perfect world instantiated, no, not yet. It is not done, no time for rest, each struggle asks its current living members to stand and bring their best once more again, again, again. That is one of history's strangest riddles. And this time, this time history gives us, we who are alive today, a terrible challenge, one that calls for everything we have within us, in this, in this emerging iron age of public anger and private power, self-indulgent wild tales fly about and clothe themselves in dreams. Old monsters rise up again, old race, old class, old theocracy, old gender. Ancient fears distilled to private lies, sanctified in public use now flung about into our common spaces to make us miserable and afraid. But we will transform our raw and painful material of fears into loving action, new policy, 
new law, an overwhelming resistance to mad plans. I know it. For well, a singular life is an option. Our mutual life together is an answer. While, <laughs> while standing back may comfort, standing up will win. I tell you, my friends, there is no better way to spend your heartbeats than in the service of justice, reason, and fairness. The future arises. The age demands and our time comes round at last. Oh, friends, I thank you for this opportunity and hope together, LGBTQ and atheists together. And I leave you with these words from Robert Greene Ingersoll, for whom I named my center. The time to be happy is now. The place to be happy is here. And the way to be happy is to make others so. Let us do it. Thank you, my friends.